And welcome back to the morning show. For 13 years, the Disability Resource Expo has strived to advance its mission of giving people with disabilities and their loved ones easier access to resources to simply improve their quality of life. So COVID-19 has pushed uh, Expo organizers to think outside the box and create these other events uh, to further that mission. So Jim Mayer joins us over video chat this morning to talk about the Thursday roundups. Hi, Jim. How you doing? I'm doing well. Good well, morning. Good morning. It's a good thing we're talking <laughs> about this on this Thursday. Yeah. Tell us about the roundups that you've been having. Right. So we're calling these the third Thursday resource roundups. So they're held on the third Thursday of each month. Uh, we've had two of them so far and we have two coming up. So there's one this month on the 21st of January, third Thursday of this month. And that one will be featuring our advocacy, legal and service organizations. So we'll have, you know, 17 of our exhibitors in those uh, topic areas uh, represented. And then our final one is next month, uh, February 18th, where we will feature our education service providers and services for young children. So can you explain to us how this is going to be different than previous years, especially due to COVID-19? Right. So this is entirely online. Mm -hmm. uh, people, you know, sign up ahead of time uh, at our website. And um, basically, the way the event is structured, it starts at 3 p.m. on that, that Thursday, uh, third Thursday of the month. And um, people will have a chance to get an overview of all of the exhibitors for that day. Uh, basically, we visit their virtual booths at the beginning of the of the event and then people will have breakout room conversations with two exhibitors of their choice they'll get to have these 15 minute small group conversations and then we end with a featured presentation by one of our exhibitors so it's just an hour and a half long event where you get to really um, visit with people in a particular area of uh, interest so. So so, Jim, I know we talked to you a few months ago before all of this kicked off, and you already mentioned that there were a few other ones that you've had. So what has the feedback been, and really why is it so important to still be able to hold these events, even if they are virtual? Right. So, you know, we've had a really good turnout so far. People seem to really appreciate our efforts to still get the information out. And um, so, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's been a different way of, of providing information, but... Um, we're pleased to be able to do it and we're pleased at the response uh, we've, we've had. So, yeah. Well, you seem pretty excited about that. Can you explain to us what kind of feeling it is to be able to provide this resource to so many people in need right now? Right. So, um, you know, this is an annual event that we, as you said, we've had for 13 years and we, we, we have a great turnout every year for that. So we knew there was a need. And, you know, uh, my particular interest, I work with high school students with disabilities and their families. and. You know, every year we have students graduating from high school programs who, who really need uh, resources, re need this kind of information. So, and that's just one example. There are a lot of folks out there with disabilities who, um, you know, may have a, a, a condition that has worsened or a, a, a new condition that they're dealing with and where they really need that information. So we felt we couldn't wait a whole other year to, to offer this. Um, so, Jim, you mentioned that the next two are the legal organizations and education services. What if somebody, you know, is listening right now and, and says, oh, no, I missed the, the last one. Do you have um, resources at your organization that, you know, people that can talk, that they can call and talk to? Yes, you know, that's a great question, Christy. Uh, we actually are posting all of the videos from these events on our website, which is disabilityresourceexpo.org. So people can go on that website and they can go to our resource guide uh, and they can also go to our uh, 2020 expo page and find um, links to the videos of, of the you know of the exhibitor overviews and of the individual uh, exhibitor interview clips so there's there's a lot of information from these events that actually will live on beyond each event and you mentioned this has been going on for about 13 years now. Obviously, it's going to be different because of COVID-19, as you mentioned there, too. But what are some of the, I guess, all-time favorite things that people always ask for, some of the best returning things for this coming upcoming event? Yeah, uh, so, you know, we hope to go back to having a live expo next fall. In fact, we have a date of October 16th tentatively set for that. And, you know, these, these events not only feature information, but they really feature um, the abilities and um, you know wonderful contributions that people with disabilities make in our community, and so we feature entertainment, and we feature uh, you know uh, games that feature people doing cool things among us, and so uh, you know that's that's something that we're looking forward to. We've been doing some of that even with 
uh, in the midst of these uh, online events where we have featured some movers and shakers with disabilities in our community. Uh, we've been doing that online as well as part of this. That's so fun. So, Jim, um, uh, you mentioned the 21st of January, February 18th is the other one. Um, do we need to register for these or can we just hop on the Zoom call? No, people do need to pre-register so that they can express their, their preferred uh, exhibitors they want to visit with. So they need to go on our website and they can find a link to our registration form. It's a real easy process and people should do that, you know, soon because we, we want them to register by about a week before the event. And Jim, for people who have never attended this event and they might have questions for you, where can they reach out to you? Oh, uh, great question. Uh, they can access my email and also my, my colleague Barb Bressner at our, at our website. Our emails are both on there. People can email us. They can, they can phone us. They, they really can find all that information on our website, disabilityresourceexpo.org. Well, Jim, thanks so much for joining us this morning. Tell Barb we miss her. She's usually <laughs> joining you on these, so tell her we said hi. <laughs> Will do. Have a good one. Jack, catch your forecast next.